Good morning, by the end of this video, you will be a page layout master and you'll be able to create gorgeous page layouts just like these. Beautiful full width grid layouts with no gaps between columns and rows. Learn how to reverse columns on mobile phones. Learn how to make a beautiful masonry grid and create beautiful layouts for text. The secret to understanding how layout works in WordPress is this picture over on the right. This is actually called the CSS box model. But if you can understand this and remember this, everything else becomes much, much simpler to understand. So I'm just going to talk you through it quickly. So in the middle, we've got content here. Now I've added the columns block to this page. You'll see over in the list view up here. All I've done is add the columns block and that's going to do most of the heavy lifting for you when you're creating your page layout. So think of it a bit like a container block if you've come from other page builders. And over on the right, this is the model we're following. So I've added the columns block and all I've done is add one column and within that I've added some content, which is actually a heading block. But we start from the content outwards. From the content outwards, you have padding. Now in Gutenberg, you can now add padding around your content. It's just in the block settings panel over on the right. This may vary depending on your theme, but more and more themes will have this functionality coming soon. And you'll see this option down here, which is dimensions. If I click on that plus sign, you'll see I've got padding and margin. I'm just going to click both of those on. That gives me access to add padding around this piece of content here. Now I can only do that because I've got this piece of content selected up in the list view. Let me show you. So if I add some padding, can you see how it's actually adding padding around those words? You get this little visual clue as you're dragging as well now, which is fantastic. You can either drag this slider here or you can actually click and put in your padding here manually or you can actually click on that little link there and then that gives you access to change padding top, bottom, left and right. So you can be really precise over the padding you add. But you can add padding around content and we move out from padding and you have the border. So again, if we look in the block settings panel, you'll see we've got this border option down here where you can actually add a border around your content. And again, we're just following the box model here. You can see how it's just, we've got content, we've got padding, and then we have this border that we can add. We can also add an, a radius to this border. You see this little radius like so. So now we come to margin, which is the final property that we have. And now we can also add that using the block editor, which is fantastic because this is really, really cool. Let's turn that on. So I go margin here. See, I've got this slider. And as I drag it, you see those blue horizontal lines that are appearing above and below. So the margin is outside. Think of it as outside the box, but it's going to add extra space between elements on the page. So if you had a photograph above this piece of content, that would generate some extra space between my piece of content and that photograph. In the old days, we used to have to add the spacer block to do this, but now we can just add margin. There is one final setting, which is gonna be incredibly useful for you, which is, I call it the gutter. But in Gutenberg terms, they call it block spacing. So I've selected the top level columns block here, and you'll see there's this block spacing. This is relevant when you've got more than one column within your layouts, like I've got on the screen here, because you can either increase the block spacing, like so, or you can actually get rid of it. You can take it down completely to zero. Now that being able to remove the gutter, has huge implications in terms of the kind of creative layouts you can create. This is how you use the columns block. So I'm going to add it into this page here. Just bear in mind the box model at all times in our heads when we're using this. So click on the blue block insert sign in the top left here. Now you can either search for columns in the search box or just go down to the third section and you'll see your columns block. So you just drag the cross into your page and you'll see a blue line that tells us where that's actually going to go. So I'm going to drop it there. It's a two-step process. You add the columns block and then you choose the proportions and the number of columns you'd like. I'm going to choose this option here, which is two columns of equal width. You add it into your page and now that sets the columns and now you can put whatever blocks you like into each column. So all I'm going to do to start with is add some text into each column. And then we're going to check on the list view because the list view is vital when you're using the columns block so you can actually see what's going on. And we can see in the list view that we've got the columns block at the top level Within that, we've actually got two columns. Within the left column, we've got the, the paragraph block. And within the right column, we've got the other paragraph block. But we can put any blocks we like within each column. So if I want to insert a heading block in this left-hand one, I can simply add the heading block. Or if I want to add the buttons block underneath this one, I can add the buttons block. I can also add styles to the columns block, like so. But I can also apply styles per column. In this case, I'm going to change the background color of this left-hand column. And I'm also going to add some additional padding, like so. In addition, I can change the vertical alignment of any content within the columns. 
using this little icon here. I can also make the columns full width bleed by clicking on this little icon up here. When you're working on columns, you can swap them around. Or you can also change the individual widths of each column. Just make sure you select the column you want to change. Then look across on the right in the column settings panel and you'll see this width option. You can change the units you want to change here. Just select the units to what you want. In this case, I've changed it to 75%. And then finally, I can add extra columns with this little slider across on the left. And I can remove columns just by deleting them. There is only one simple option to deal with mobile display, but I'm going to show you in a few minutes how to get more control over your mobile display of columns. But the one option you get out of the box is stack on mobile. If you do click that, then it's going to look like this. If you don't click that, then it's going to look like this. One of the criticisms of Gutenberg has been a lack of layout control for mobile devices like phones. I'm going to give you a very, very simple CSS tweak today that will let you reverse your columns. And that solves many of the problems that you might encounter when you're using the, the columns block for layouts. Let me explain. So normally what happens when you use the columns block is the right hand column will flip down underneath the left hand column when you're viewing on mobile like this example here. As I reduce the screen size, we're emulating what this is going to look like on a mobile phone and you'll see the right hand column will flip naturally underneath the left hand column. That's normal behavior. Sometimes you don't always want that. Imagine if you've got vital information in that right hand column or a photograph that you want to be on the top of the mobile view. This is where reversing columns comes into its own. So this one I've set to reverse and you'll see as I reduce the size of the screen again simulating viewing not on a mobile phone you'll see how the right hand column now is at the top and the left one's underneath. I've just reversed the order of the columns. It also works on three, four, five and six column layouts. You'll see an example down here. I've got three columns, the left, middle and right. As I reduce the screen size again, right one's at the top, the middle one's in the middle and the left one's now at the bottom. And here is the simple CSS you need to reverse your columns. I will put a link to this code in the description below. This is using a free plugin called Simple CSS, just a place where you can actually put your CSS. This is the CSS you actually need to put in that plugin. And then on the column block itself, the one you want to reverse, you just put this class name down here. Now, as long as this class name is the same as this class name, it'll work perfectly. One of the cool things you can do with columns is add a background image to a column and over on the right on the screen here you can see an example of one I've put together. At the moment you can add a background color to a column but you can't add a background image but with a simple bit of CSS you can add background images to columns. Here is the CSS you'll need. I will link to this in the description below for you again. Dot shorts is the class name and over on the right here in the column settings you can see in the additional CSS classes I've just used that class name itself. Make sure you don't put the dot here you just put the name shorts put dot shorts up here and then just copy my code. You also need to upload your photograph so you upload it to WordPress. When you upload a photograph to WordPress it will automatically generate you a URL. And that's it there you can see on my screen. Replace my link with your link and that will work. Right let's put it all together now to try and create a grid layout. The one I'm going to try and build is over on the right here. It's a two column full width layout with no gutter and no margin top and bottom. So we're going to start by adding the columns block by clicking on the block inserter. We'll go down here, find the columns block and we'll just add that into our page. It's a 50-50 layout so we're going for that option there and that sets our columns and now in the left hand column I'm actually going to add the cover block. So I click on the plus sign, search for cover and add that block in. Now I just need to select the photograph that I want to use which is that one there and I'm going to click on the block settings panel and because it's a cover block, it naturally adds some opacity. You can also change the focal point. I'm okay with that though. So I'm just gonna change the opacity to make it brighter. If we click on the list view, you'll see the cover block actually comes with a paragraph block, which we can actually remove. This right-hand column we're gonna to add, to start with, we're gonna add the heading block in there first, like so, and then write Sam's name. It might start wrapping, so we're just gonna turn off the list view. Underneath that, we're gonna add some content. Uh, I'll make that a little bit smaller actually and then underneath that we're going to add the buttons block so just forward slash buttons add the buttons block select the outline view so now we've got the basic structure right it's time to style it so what we're going to do is we're going to style the right hand column that blue color so we click on the list view select the column choose the background color obviously choose any color you like and that adds the background the other thing we need to do here is we need to remove that block spacing the gutter 
So click on the top level columns block itself, come down here, click on the three dots on dimensions and choose block spacing. That just makes that setting available for us. And now we can actually reduce that block spacing. Can you see how that text is very tight to the column that it sits within? So I'm gonna select the column using the list view over here on the left, then come down to padding. And I'm just gonna give that text a little bit of space to breathe. Again, remembering how our box model works. Now it's time for the second section. So what I'm gonna do is duplicate the first column section that I created by clicking on the three dots and clicking on duplicate. Then I'm gonna select the left-hand column just here, and I'm gonna flip that to the right. Then I'm gonna replace the photo here by clicking on it and clicking replace, open media library and selecting my photograph. At this point I could change the focal point, but I'm happy with that. And then the final thing I need to do is remove that margin between the two sections. So I click on the top section first and I wanna get rid of any margin I've got at the bottom here. You'll see I've got a little bit of margin. Click on the second columns block and come down here, get rid of that margin. And you see the margin has gone there now. So now we have our finished layout looking pretty cool. <laughs> So that's it. Thank you so much for watching. If you made it to the end, then well done. You get a gold star. I hope you found that really useful. If you did, if you can hit that like button down below now, it would be amazing because it really, 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 really does help spread the word of the channel. So thank you if you can hit that like button now. And also every time you do hit that like button, our cats get a little treat. If you want to see more videos like this, hit that subscribe button and you'll be notified every time I release a new one. Keep well, and I'll see you soon. Bye.